Hello lovely viewers of Sharing Community. Welcome back to your own channel, your own community. Thank you so much for your love and support for our visually impaired community. As always we say, sharing is caring. So please share, like and subscribe to receiving awesome contents. And also, love, live, love. Take care and see you soon. So thank you for watching us. Please subscribe for more content and follow. Send to a friend. Bye. We're out. Hello everybody and welcome to another video for sharing community made by Alexandra Negueta, the blind soap maker. You can find me on my website at www.theblindsoapmaker.co.uk. Today we are making a pear and black cherry pie. For this you will need a two pound pie dish, you will need 170 grams of plain flour. You will need 70 grams of caster sugar. You will need 20 grams of brown sugar. You will need a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. You will need three pears. I use the ripe and ready pears. And I'm going to use a little bit of lemon rind in mine. And 400 grams of dark black cherries. Obviously you can use blackberries if you wanted to, but today I'm going to go for cherries, okay? have my board and my knife here so let's get put so here is my first step I'm going to start by peeling my I nearly said potatoes then my pears <laughs> so when I peel a pear or anything to be frank I start from one end to the other end and I just use one thumb on my left hand side to make sure that I have gone all the way around my fruit. Now you see there's a good perfect example of where I have managed to miss a bit and I'm able to find it with my left thumb and go all the way right up to the top. I don't have to put a lot of pressure with um, this peeler and really with a peeler you really oughtn't to put a lot of pressure because it should just cut through. Okay, now I'm checking um, and then I'm just going to peel a little bit off the top bottom sorry there we go I think that is fully peeled <laughs> so now that I have peeled all of my pears and I'm now going to top and tail them making sure not to take too much off because I do actually want to have a bit of pear in my food <laughs> but making sure that I get I use my fingers to find out and make sure that I've got all of the hard nasty bits off my pears before I then cut them lengthways into quarts I'm going to try and cut them evenly because the more even you can cut something, the more likely it is to cook at the same time and be an even bake throughout. So there we go. There is my quarters. I'm just going to move them aside for now. 
sorry, the instant essay, I meant R. So now that I've cut them into my quarts, I'm going to do the hardest part, which is the cut out of the pith. If you're using apples or pears or anything else in your pie, the one thing you do not want is pith. So in order to cut out my pith as a visually impaired person, I get one hand, my left hand, and I put my fingers on each side of the width of the I am cutting into and then I use my knife and I put it at the end of the piece of fruit. I'll show you with this piece here. Oh gosh, no, I'll show you with this piece, sorry. I put I put my knife flat with my right hand side and I hold my fruit with the left hand in my fingers right at the fingertips. And then I just dig the knife in a little bit on an edge so that I can feel the one finger on top of my knife on my right hand as to whether I have managed to get all of the pith out of my fruit because I don't want it in my pie, you know. Um, <laughs> And then voila, that is how it is meant to look. I'm going to do that again so that if you have a friend with you um, or if you can get some, some way of putting it in a larger format, then you can see it because fruit is quite juicy and it's just another way of controlling my knife to use one finger on top of a flattened knife when I'm cutting out my pith. Because I also want to have a bit of the fruit left. I don't want to just um, take away all of the fruit from my pie. So there's my third one done. This is practice makes perfect, guys, okay? So seriously, if you can't do it, then that's absolutely fine. You can buy fruit that has already been cut up and it does save time and make it easier. So there we go. Voila, there's my fourth. And if you want to finger through it, you shouldn't be able to find any bit of pith on your piece of fruit at all. So now on to my next bit. I'm now going to cut them up into even-ish slices. And then I'm going to put them into my pie dish, like so. In order to make them even, I put one finger over my knife and touch the other section I am cutting. And the reason why I do this and make sure that I try and get an even cut is because I want to be able to have it cooking evenly throughout. Obviously, it doesn't have to be an exact science, but it does help. So whilst I have my finger over my knife, which is my knife is in on my right, in my right hand, and I'm holding the pear with my left hand, I use my finger and thumb that is behind the finger that is over the knife as a guide for my knife to go down evenly through the fruit. Okay. And of course, as I've said before, practice makes perfect. So now I'm going to add my cherries into my mixture with 
well, the same on mixture. I'm going to add my cherries in with my lovely, yummy, yummy pear. <laughs> I'm going to try and get it all an even mix in the too much together because then you won't get nice juicy pear with lovely yummy black cherry will you there we go i think that's a more or less even coating i'm hoping it is it's in all sections of my pie now i'm going to take my brown sugar and i'm going to try and evenly evenly spread it around my pie so I'm just going to take it into my hands and then I'm going to let it kind of float through my fingers because I think that's the best way of making it as even as possible. There we go. And I've definitely got it covered in brown sugar. Yeah, I said that was about enough. Now, I've used this lemon on numerous occasions, so you can probably see how much I've used it. So I'm now going to put some lemon zest in into my pie. I'm not going to lie, but I'm actually finding this quite difficult. <laughs> I very rarely do this. I'm just trying to get it all over the pie so I'm not just getting an uneven amount of lemon. Okay. So now I am going to add my ginger. Really, I should have added it in before, but I've been a, you know, a bit of a tea. So I'm going to try and get about a quarter of a teaspoon of this ginger into the palm of my hand here and then I'm going to try and evenly spread it throughout my mixture, okay? Just as I did with the sugar. And then hopefully we'll have a nice gingery, sugary, tarty pie of loveliness, okay? Now then I'm going to put it into the oven to bake for about 20 minutes. If you use something harder like apple, then I would suggest that you bake it for about 30 minutes. There we go. Yeah. Do you know, I feel incredibly silly right now, guys, because I forgot to, to mention that in our ingredients we need 90 grams of butter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my 90 grams of butter to my 170 grams of plain flour and I'm going to chop it all up into the flour and then I'm going to rub the butter into the flour so that it becomes exactly like the red crumbs. Okay? You just need a bit of patience with this, guys. I promise you that all it takes is a little bit of patience. So, get that off the bottom of my knife. I'm going to put it into my hands and then I'm going to start rubbing and letting it fall out of my hands into the flour so that it's nice and bread crummy.
It's getting more and more breadcrumby as we go along here, guys, which is a good sign. So I have been at this for about five minutes, and as you can see, it is now nice and crumbly. It's like little crumbles of yumminess. And when it is like this, that you can see there, it is time to add my caster sugar. So I'm gonna add all of that in and then I'm gonna mix it in so that it's nice and sweet on top of my fruit. I'm gonna mix all of that in. And as soon as it's nicely mixed like this, it is now ready to go on top of my fruit and become a crumble. You know how I put the ginger in with my fruit? Well, you can do that. You can also put it in with your crumble mix. I chose today to put it in with my fruit. But it's up to you where you want to put yours. especially when it comes to burning yourself. Now I have my crumble mix, which is now ready to go. It's all nice and crumbly. So I'm just gonna get that over the top of my fruit mixture. I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and even because I wanna make sure that it is over all of my pie and all areas. And then I'm just gonna pat it down on Alex in there. And then we'll just even it up with our hands. Make sure it's all the way around and then I'm just gonna pat it down gently. It's all nice and even. Well, evenish, you know. Right, and remember, cooking is not an exact science. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get just a little bit of caster sugar out of the bag and pop it on the top, sprinkle it on the top because it makes it a lovely golden brown color. And it makes it really super golden brown and lovely and crunchy. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this a little bit over the top like that. There we go. Now I'm gonna put it in an oven that it that is on at 170 degrees. It's a fan oven, and I'm gonna put it in for half an hour. So bon appetit, guys. So now I'm taking out our pie from the oven. It is looking gorgeous, guys. It is looking and smelling really nice. I'm just going to close the oven now. And bon appetit. There we go. Look at that. 